we'll go ahead and get started. And I'd like to welcome you today to our health talk. Uh, today we have Aideen Keller here. She's an RN here in the cardiac rehab unit at Altman Hospital. And today we're going to hear about whole food plant uh, based diets. So uh, welcome Aideen and Feel Thank you very much. You Thank you it. very much. So I have a ton of things to talk about. And so this is just a basic overview. I'm not going to go into like the weeds and too many things because I want you to get a big basic overview. And if you want a copy of my slides, you can email me and I will send you a PDF of them. So you can kind of digest it a little bit more because it's a lot of information and some of it I'm going to really fly through. So here we go. So um, in being in cardiac rehab, about 12 years ago, um, I read a book called Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. And because of that, I was, you know, had taken care of heart patients and I wanted to know everything I could about heart disease and how to treat it and you know, what was best for my patients. I also read Dean Ornish's book and that was a game changer for me. And because of it, I tried it and have been pretty much on, on this plant perfect diet for the last um, 12 years. So let's begin. How to eat a plant perfect and plant strong diet. We'll go into what exactly that means. The foods we play that we eat, sorry, the foods we eat, we eat play as much of a role in our health portfolio as studying and discipline play in our career portfolio. So why do we let our taste buds dictate what we eat? We don't go to college and then just sleep in and goof off if we want to get good grades. We study, we discipline ourselves. So why do we let eating just, you know, I do whatever we want. Why do we, why do we do that? I have no idea. Um, well, maybe it's something to do with being indoctrinated. We are have constant, constant images ever since we're little about what's fun, what we should eat, what's cool. We have celebrities, you know, looking really good and telling us what to eat. I say, anything a celebrity is trying to sell you, uh, it's suspect. Did you guys see the new adult Happy Meals too? That's, that's disturbing. Anyways. Um, I did see that. Uh, it's like, oh my goodness. That's, that's crazy. And, and people are going crazy over it. They want these little toys. It's like, grow up people. Yeah. Um, it reminds me kind of of back in the night. It was 1941, I believe. Vitamins had been discovered and they started putting vitamins in donuts and started advertising. Hey, vitamin donuts gives you pep and vigor because it has B1 vitamins in it, right? Well, adding a vitamin, fortifying a junk food does not a health food make. So I hope you get that in your brain today. Adding vitamins to something to healthify it does not do that. Um, there is nothing so absurd that it cannot be believed as truth and repeated often enough. And I think that is true with our food choices. Uh, back in 2010, the Canadian um, Broadcasters Association, the ones in charge of the televisions in, uh, or the advertisements in Canada, they, they wanted to prove that they could pretty much sell anything on TV. And so they ran a two-week series of advertisements for broccoli and extolling the virtues of broccoli, how fabulous it was. And, you know, guy falls out of a plane and, and his parachute doesn't open, yet he survives and how miraculous that was. But no, not, not as miraculous as broccoli. And these advertisements um, went on for two weeks and the results were in two weeks the increased broccoli sales by more than 5% using nothing but television advertisement. Can you imagine now being bombarded with social media and every time you turn on your phone, something you know pops up, hey, look at this, hey, the celebrity's eating this. 
how impactful that is. Um, working in cardiac rehab, I go over diets of people and it is just terrible what people think is a healthy diet. We are very, we have a distorted view of what a healthy diet is. We have anything from Adkins, very, very high fat. We get mostly fat and meat and very, very low carb to other ones. So um, the South Beach diet actually is not a bad one. The DASH diet has been um, tried and true as well. But I'm going to focus today on these two. Reversing heart disease by Dean Ornish. She's a cardiologist out of California. And he has been studying heart disease for over 30 years. And he does have um, scientific um, study, published studies about reversing heart disease, as does Dr. Caldwell Elselston out of Cleveland Clinic. There's also a nutritarian diet from Joel Furman, which I'm a big fan of his. Um, his diet is 10 to 15 percent fat, so it's still very low in fat, but his is um, focuses more on uh, on other foods, but it's still pretty much plant based. It's it's a really good diet as well. So for a plant perfect diet for Dr. Russellston's diet, no animal products or any animals, so no meat um, except for honey. This isn't technically a vegan diet because vegans don't eat honey and they don't wear leather. This is not a vegan diet. This is a whole food, plant-based diet. Um, fish and poultry are considered animals, so no. Um, some people say, I don't eat meat, I just eat chicken. Well, chicken is meat. Um, no oil, and we'll go into why that is. No nuts for him except nut milks. And the reason is the very, very high fat content. Um, the goal is to keep the, the um, calories less than 10% fat. And once you start eating nuts, it just goes crazy. Um, one, one ounce serving of nuts, peanuts, for example, has about 14 grams of fat. Um, so it's mostly fat. And the limitation of the fact that a person on this diet to reverse a disease is only about 20 to 22 grams for the entire day. So if you eat one serving of nuts, you just, you know, are over halfway there. So that's why he says no nuts. It's not that nuts are bad. It's just that they're very high in fat. And we'll go into, you know, why. Uh, no fruit juice because we don't want you to drink your calories. And that's a good overall, just about anybody. We shouldn't be drinking tons of calories. And um, they add up very quickly. Very small amounts of added sugar, less than 5% of your daily calories. So this means that that includes honey, maple syrup, brown sugar, any, any kind of those types of calories. Um, they add up very quickly. And the goal is um, to be thin not to have excess weight. And sugar just adds calories. And of course it tastes good, but it adds calories without nutrition. No caffeinated coffee for him because it does have some studies that show it could increase your cholesterol for some people that are sensitive to it and interfere with your um, artery dilation, which we'll go into and does recommend green tea though. Limit soy due to high fat content. It's not that you can't have it, just limit it. Only 100% whole grains, not partially whole grains. No avocados or coconut for the plant perfect due to high saturated fats and lots and lots of greens, especially when somebody's starting on this diet and they are having angina. Like for example, my dad three years ago was diagnosed with severe coronary artery disease in three of his coronary arteries, all three of them. And it, they were on the top part of his arteries and on, on the bottom. And he, they, they couldn't do surgery. He's very high risk. So he went on this diet and within weeks, he went from not being able to walk five minutes without getting chest pain to being able to walk on the treadmill. He went through cardiac rehab and it was a two-month program for him. 
And by the time he was finished with cardiac rehab, he could walk on the treadmill for a half an hour, not having any chest pain, which is giant. He had no procedures. Um, he did his diet and he is on medication. So, um, and very little medications. So I, I see it work. I see people that um, did not have bypass surgery that, you know, it's been 10, 12 years now and they're still doing fine, living a, living a great life, being very, very active. So I know that, um, I know that it works for, for people that actually do it. Um, so eat beans kidney beans, garbanzo beans, lentils, and the supplements that, that he recommends are B12, possibly D, and tablespoon or two of flax meal or chia seeds, something high in omega-3 fatty acids. So what is left to eat after that list, right? Like, oh my goodness, there's ugh, what to do, right? Margaret Mead said, it's easier to change a man's religion than to change his diet. And working in cardiac rehab, I believe it's so. After you get ripped open a couple of times, people are still don't want to give up their food. Uh, in order to change your diet, you have to have a really good reason. You know, what is your reason to make changes? You have to have a reason for making these drastic changes. And the, the reason Dr. Usselston um, is so strict on his diet is because everything he omits has to do with your endothelial cells. Now, these are the inner lining of your arteries, your arteries all over your body, your brain, your that every artery that, that goes throughout your body. They line your arteries, they line your veins, it's all of your vasculature. It is lined with these endothelial cells. They're about the thickness of a spider web. So think about how thin a spider web is. And it just coats that inner lining. It makes the lining kind of like Teflon. Teflon is nonstick. So it kind of like coats it to make it nonstick. But it also secretes a, a substance called nitric oxide, which um, dilates your blood vessels and makes your blood less sticky. So it's an amazing um, coating, but they can be injured very easily. And those things that can injure it are all the things Dr. Russellson does to stay away from. So when we usually think of coronary arteries, we think of our main, main ones, your left main coronary artery, your anterior descending, your circumflex, and your um, right coronary artery. That's kind of what we think about. You know, you got the, the big vessels there. What about the microvascular circulation? Look at those little teensy weensy little capillaries. Those capillaries are made of endothelial cells, which we just talked about. Those need to be functioning properly in order for you to get the blood into your cells. So um, there's a, a thing out called Taposubo and um, which which usually affects women, and it's a microvascular circulation problem where you can actually have a heart attack damage, even though your main coronary arteries are not blocked, so they can't stent anything. But it's the little tiny itsy bitsy microstriculation that is shut down, so you can't get the blood into the the cell. So that's that is a big problem. So this diet helps with that microvascular circulation. It helps dilate those, keep those open. So I believe that is why my dad is still walking around at almost 82 years old, um, over three years after his initial diagnosis of, you know, over 95% blockage of his coronary arteries. So, so what does an endothelial protective diet look like? And it's not just bark, I promise you. So um, spicy oats, um, you can look at fatfreevegan.com. She has a lot of wonderful, wonderful recipes um, for oatmeal. Usually a lot of people think oatmeal, oh, I'm doing really good. But it's the instant packets with lots of salt and lots of sugar. The more processed a food is, the quicker it turns to sugar, the quicker it loses nutrients, 
you want to get things to as whole state as you can on this diet. Another overnight oats, these were made with old fashioned oats and chia seeds and, and um, blueberries. This is a tofu scramble. And those are not french fries, those are baked sweet potatoes. Shredded wheat, those whole grain cereals, not the ones with sugar on top of it. Ashi makes a seven grain nugget that doesn't have any sugar or oil in it. Um, Ezekiel 9 also makes a, a nugget type cereal with, with no oil in it. Grape nuts does, not the flakes, but the little chunk ones. Um, you can easily get frozen berries and frozen fruit if they're not in season to make it a little bit cheaper for you. Flax seed is available everywhere. When I first started this diet over 12 years ago, um, it was a lot more difficult to find flax seed. Now it is like a big thing. Different types of dairy substitutes. You can do oat milk or almond milk or soy milk. Um, there's so many different types of dairy-free ones out there. You definitely want to get the ones with no oil in it, though, and no sugar added. Here's just a bowl with beans and also maybe sriracha sauce on it. Chili in a, a lettuce leaf. Lentil soup. Sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes with chili on it are wonderful. Sweet potatoes with salsa on it are wonderful and some black beans. Instant pot vegetable soup. A lot of these, again, are from Fat Free Vegan. She has really pretty pictures on her website. And pizzas, you can have pizza depending on what you put on it. A good base could be a pita bread, an oil-free pita bread. And then you could put some... Um, pasta sauce on it if you want to, or you could use a fat-free hummus. There are so many different kinds of whole grains out there now as well. It's super easy to find brown rice and farro and quinoa and just a whole bunch of different kinds of things. Kale. Kale is pretty much everywhere as well, and there's different kinds, and it's super easy to grow as well. So Everybody should be growing some kale, super easy. And it's still living in my garden. So uh, very hardy kale is. As Ann Esselstyn and I at a conference, we are stripping kale, just how easy it is to grow, how easy it is to um, prepare. You can also find it just about anywhere. You can get kale at Walmart or Marks or Aldi's. You don't have to spend a fortune to eat healthy. Here's one of Aunt, my, one of my favorite things. It looks looks funny, but it's kale with lemon slices and hummus on toasted whole rye bread. Very good. Anne and Jane also have a YouTube channel with all different kinds of recipes on it. One of my favorite ones are the Pepper Ridge sandwiches. Uh, very good. And I toast mine in a panini maker with no oil. Um, super good. Beans are easy to find. Um, you can get some with no added salt. If you are on a low sodium diet, probably a good idea. Or you can make your own. Super cheap, easy to do. If you don't want to be cutting up your vegetables, washing them and cutting them up, and then they get um, old in your refrigerator, um, buy frozen. There's a ton of frozen vegetables out there. Just pull out what you need, cook it, and super easy. Spice it up with some sriracha. My favorite is Cholula sauce because it doesn't have that mm, sour mash taste like um, other hot sauces do. And tamari. I put a picture of it on here because a lot of the recipes have tamari in it. And it is a lower sodium type of soy sauce. Ezekiel 9 makes a sprouted grain tortillas. Oil-free tortillas are very hard to find. Um, it is in the freezer section of most health food stores, um, and it makes good burritos if you warm them up, and it makes food crackers too. Oil-free hummus, super easy to make, but um, you can also get it at Raisin Rack has the oil-free one, Amir, 
is the only oil-free one I know. It does have a little tahini in it, but this one's oil-free. Um, make it pretty. So if you have company over, make it pretty. You can do like a um, ranch type of a, of a dressing with, um, and it's made with tofu, and you can put, put veggies in it. So that's something anybody who even isn't following a whole food plant based diet would try. Like, no, who doesn't like ranch and veggies? Greens are super easy to find as well. To flavor them, uh, vinegars are wonderful. I, I use balsamic vinegars for my favorite. My favorite place to get them are at Mox Greenhouse, which is in Louisville. They have a whole room of different kind of uh, balsamic vinegars that you can taste. So I probably will drink uh, half a cup to a cup of them by the time I'm done tasting everything. Anyways, they're really, really good. My favorite right now is the Sicilian lemon. Butternut squash roll-ups, and this is from Forks Over Knives. Uh, layered lasagna, and this is like an Italian layered vegetable casserole, kind of like a lasagna, except it didn't have the noodles in it. Does not look good. White bean and garlic stew. Whole grain pastas are super easy to find now. They, they did not, they didn't used to be, but they are really easy to find now. And they also come in like um, brown rice if you uh, are gluten-free. Pasta sauce is a little bit more difficult to find that don't have oil in it. So they usually have something bad in it, whether it's oil or sugar or salt or something. So making your own is probably the best way to do it. But if you do get uh, a jarred one with no oil, you can always add a um, sauce that doesn't have anything in it or just chopped tomatoes with it and then add a few ingredients on your own. So you don't have to totally, it can be like semi-homemade. Um, Walnut Acres has one that has, it's tomato basil. And then there's another one at Aldi's. It's one of their organic ones um, that doesn't have oil in it. But oil-free pasta sauces are very difficult to find oil-free, salt-free tomatoes are very easy to find. Salsas are, are a good option as well. You can add them to rice. You can add them to, like I said, the sweet potatoes. Salsas usually have no oil, but always check your ingredients. Vegetable broths. Um, you got to be wary of the sodium in them. This one's not bad. It's 135 milligrams per cup, but this one's 480, and this one is 800 milligrams for vegetable broth. So just be buyer beware. Watch your, watch your sodium content. Bob's Red Mill makes a whole host of different kinds of whole grains. Berlin Bakery makes several different no oil types of bread that don't have any added sugar either. They do have, I believe, honey to um, make the yeast rise, but um, they're very, very good. You can get them either at the health food store in the freezer section or order online. You can get around here, Alvarado Street, which I have found at Mark's before, and I've also found in the freezer section at the health food stores. And Aldi's also has a couple of different types of no oil added uh, breads. So Aldi's has a little bit of honey. It has no oil. It has, it's, it's vegan. It, and then versus whole grain brown berry, which you think is really good, but it has, it has soybean oil. And it also has whey, which is an animal product. What to eat for snacks, air pop popcorn, it's boring by itself. So spritz a little bit of Bragg's liquid aminos on it and some nutritional yeast. And that really perks it up. So you can eat a bunch of popcorn for very little calories and no oil. Um, crackers. Oh, one of my favorite ones, I don't eat crackers very much. They're still very high in calories um, and I just don't keep them in the house. But if I have company over or something, maybe Mary's Gone Crackers is, is, a good, um, is a good one. 
and put maybe hummus on it instead of cheese, which we're used to doing. Here's a comparison of Ritz crackers versus Mary's Gone crackers. They have about the same amount of calories. Mary's Gone crackers is a little bit more. Um, and Mary's Gun Crackers has a little bit more fat. Remember, we need to limit our fat in the reversal program. If you don't have to reverse heart disease, and if you don't have to um, lose weight, um, then you could have more stuff. Like I don't have heart disease, but I try to follow this so I can speak about it to my, to my patients. Um, but if you are just trying to be a healthy person, um, you could have a little bit more. Um, but look at the ingredients, whole grains, whole grain rice, that gets its fat from, um, flaxseed and sesame seeds, whereas the Ritz crackers gets its fat from oil, from safflower oil and everything in it is processed. So we want to move away from processed stuff and get to the more whole foods. Matzah crackers that come in whole wheat. Chips. It is very difficult to find an oil-free chip, and I love chips and salsa. So I make my own. I use flour tortillas, not flour tortillas. It should say um, corn tortillas. Sorry, it should be the corn tortillas. Uh, cut those up, put them in the oven, and and bake them, and then they they make a really nice chip. Yonanas. That's been out probably about eight years, nine years, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, you take frozen bananas and run them through and it kind of blends them up into a soft serve ice cream type of a thing, um, which I, I got one and I didn't use it as much as I thought I would. I use my Vitamix more, but there's a new machine out there that I want so bad, but it's like 200 bucks. It's called a Ninja Creamy. It takes pretty much anything. You can have fruit, you can and it, it creamifies it into an ice cream type of consistency. So it's totally on my Christmas list on that one. And where do you get your protein? The same place your protein gets theirs. Where do cows get protein? They eat a lot of grass and grains, gorillas, pretty much vegan diet. Yeah, that's where we get it. It's in the food. So, and how much protein do we need anyways? So a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just really tired. I need to get some protein. But did you know that protein isn't your body's first choice for energy? We don't burn protein for energy. It's the most inefficient fuel our body can use for energy. Our body uses carbohydrates, ones that Carbohydrates turn to sugar. Our body uses sugar as fuel. Um, if you ever know a runner, if you are a runner, they carb load. They eat a lot of carbs so that they can perform well. Their muscles need carbs. Um, so we only need about 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So a 150 pound person would need about 54 grams of protein per day. Unless you're a bodybuilder, then you need a little bit more. Unless um, there, there are some other exceptions. Maybe you have an injury and you're healing, you need a little bit more protein. But on average, um, that's, all, that's all the protein that you need. In 2015, only one in 10 adults consumed enough fruits and vegetables daily. I think it's a lot less than that now. And we worry about our protein, but do we consider fiber? That fiber is what we're deficient in. We are, as, as a whole in America, extremely deficient in fiber. Fat. How much fat is essential? We talk about fat like, you know, the Atkins diet is giantly high in fat. But what is essential? What do we have to consume to survive? We only need about 3% of our calories to come from essential fatty acids. Essential means we have to consume it. Um, our body doesn't naturally make it. We have to consume that type of fat. And 
The fats that are essential are omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids. Um, and how much should we consume? Well, the low-fat camp, which is Ornish, Esselstyn, McDougall, and you could put Joel um, Furman on there as well for the most part, right around 10% of your calories um, could or should come from fat. The high-fat camps are like the American Heart Association, the um, National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, the American Dietetic Association, and the USDA. Theirs are 20 to 35% of the calories can come from fat. Um, when you're looking at your food label, it's a good rule of thumb to look at it and keep your calories at less than 20% of your calories from fat. I know I said 10% a little bit ago, but not all of your food is going to have a label, like your fruits and vegetables aren't going to have a label. Um, so something that you're looking at that has a label, make sure that it's less than 20% of the calories from fat. That limits, that helps you limit unhealthy fats and helps you limit your calorie density. Omega-3 to 6 ratio. This is important. So how many omega-6 units versus how many omega-3s? Ratio matters. Um, in a study, it was in 2002, in secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease, a ratio of four to one, four omega-6s to one, was associated with a 70% decrease in total mortality. And I thought it was interesting, um, different ratio amounts also help with rectal cancer as well as breast cancer. And helping with rheumatoid arthritis as well. Keeping those ratios um, within a, a, a low proportion is, is healthy. Whereas a ratio of 10 omega-6s to one omega-3 had adverse consequences. Well, what about taking a supplement, right? Dr. Oz says, hey, take fish krill oil. I think this is a big thing. It used to be as big thing when I used to watch him. Um, well, not so much because excessive omega-6s, which are found in pretty much all foods, um, it's, you, you, if you eat food, you will get enough omega-6s. It's more difficult to get your omega-3s. But if you eat a lot of omega-6s and then you try to supplement and help that ratio um, by eating a lot of supplements, it doesn't work because they compete for the same enzyme that breaks them down. And so you're still going to have too much omega-6. So no oil. All oils have a combination of different fats in them. They have saturated fats, which is shown in red. They have uh, monounsaturated fats, those MUFAs. Um, oleic acid or omega-9s, they're shown in the orange or yellow, I should say. Then you have omega-3s in orange and you have your omega-6s in blue. So I know we hear a lot about olive oil, how fabulous olive oil is for you. Well, what's the ratio? We got a lot. We got some saturated fats there. Yes, and we have omega-9, saturated omega-9s are not essential fatty acids, right? Only sixes and threes are essential. And it doesn't have very much omega-3s at all. Like 1% of it is omega-3s, very, very small percentage. Um, so not the best thing. Best thing would be like flax. And we don't rec I don't recommend flax Oil goes rancid very quickly and doesn't have, it's very processed. So eating the whole food is best. So I like to think of your coronary arteries, your vasculature as your house, okay? If your house was on fire, would you put one can of gasoline on your house? No, you wouldn't do that. It's just a little can. It's a big house. What difference is it going to make, right? When your house is on fire, you want to snuff the flames out. 
You don't want to add an accelerant on that. So oil, yes, if your house wasn't on fire, if you didn't have coronary artery disease, then you could get by with it. Sure, go ahead. If you if you're not don't have excess weight, if you don't have um, any disease process, no family history of it, you're good. You're um, then you can probably get by with it. You know, a house on fire, and if it's not on fire, if you throw some gas on it, it's not going to combust, right? But if you do, don't be putting an accelerant on it. We want to calm the arteries down. And that's what a low-fat, whole food, plant-based diet does. So eating that healthy diet plus regular exercise, stress reduction, smoking cessation, keeping your blood pressure under control, all of those things calm that inflammation in your arteries. Things that increase the inflammation is insulin resistance, like diabetes, excessive fructose, refined carbohydrates, and too much omega-6s and too much other fats. Um, Dr. Esselstyn recommends one to two tablespoons of ground flax a day to get your omega-3s. It could be chia seeds too. Chia seeds, they're not just for chia pets. Who knew? Um, Dean Ornish um, used to recommend fish oil. He did step back on that a little bit recently because there has been a study that came out last year, I believe, that um, links high doses of omega-3 fatty acid fish supplements to prostate cancer. So it, I don't know if it, was, it wasn't a causation, but it was a, um, a correlation. So they stepped back a little bit on that recommendation. And why no meat? Why is he so picky on the meat? It has to do with a oh, couple of things. It has to do with your flow mediated dilatation, your artery dilation. There's a test that you can check that out. It's called a brachial artery tourniquet test. It's where you stop the flow of blood in your arm, put a blood pressure cuff around it, um, first measure the size of the artery by an ultrasound, then put blood pressure cuff around it, stop the flow of blood, for five minutes, that would hurt, and it does. Stop the flow of blood, then release it and see how well your arteries dilate. In a normal person, that lack of blood flow will start making your, your telling your body to dilate. It'll say, dilate those blood vessels, dilate those blood vessels. If your endothelial cells are working properly, it will dilate to get blood there. If they're not working properly, you will not see increased blood flow. You will not see those getting larger. Well, a whole food plant-based diet improved it the best. So a baseline eating nothing, that's what the baseline is. South Beach diet did show improvement. They have lots of vegetables on there, not just oils, but plant-based diet rocked with dilating those blood vessels. So think of that microvascular circulation. We want to dilate every little um, capillary that we have. Whereas the Adkins or high fat diet reduced that. It was, it was the lowest. Another reason no meat is TMAO, trimethylamine oxide. There was a study um, 19, oh, 2014, 2013, 2014, I believe is when it came out, um, that showed that, that tested people who ate meat versus people that did not eat meat or any animal products. And it had to do with the gut bacteria. So when you eat carnitine or choline, which is found a lot, it's in vegetables too, but it's found a lot in meat, um, shellfish and eggs and dairy. And when the person eat that, ate that, it in your gut bacteria, it mixed with that and it produced something called TMA, trimethylamine, which went to your liver and produced TMAO, which is difficult, which, which increases your production of, of atherosclerosis. It, it kind of um, hardens the arteries, makes the arteries plug up more. 
So we don't want that. We don't want clogged arteries. We want arteries that open nice. Um, the ones who did not eat that, those types of foods, they did not produce TMAO. Salt recommendations. Um, not super strict on salt. Um, the, the goal is less than 2,300 milligrams per day, which is about a teaspoon. Um, and not everybody is the same. Some people need a little bit more than others. Um, people with heart failure, systolic heart failure, they might really need to restrict their sodium level. Whereas um, a heart patient who doesn't have any heart failure wouldn't need to be as restrictive with their sodium. So it's not a one size fits all um, by, by any means. Where do we get our salt? Most of it is in processed foods and restaurant foods. 12% is naturally occurring. We need about 500 milligrams of sodium per day um, in, our, in our diets. And we could totally get that if we added nothing. If we just ate foods out of the, out of the garden, um, we would get enough sodium. 6% uh, is added at the table and 5% with cooking. Carbohydrates. Carbs get a bad rap. I believe Americans are carbophobic. We're just, oh, I'm counting my carbs. I got to worry about the carbs. But not all carbs are created equally. The average person gets less than one serving of unprocessed whole carbs a day. Carbs are the preferred fuel for your body. Your body burns them and turns them into glucose, which we use for fuel. Unprocessed carbs are low in calories and calorie density. These are things like fresh fruits, vegetables, starchy vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. They contain lots of vitamins and micronutrients and prebiotics. We've all heard of probiotics, right? Probiotics. Uh, um, in cultured foods, her cultural, um, yogurts, kimchi, kefir, that, that type of thing, um, sauerkraut. Probiotics are that type of thing, those bacteria, but prebiotics are the food that those little bugs eat. So they eat fiber. There's an inverse relationship between fiber intake and cardiovascular disease and stroke. So the more fiber in whole foods, I don't think it would work if you just ate a bottle of Metamucil every day, okay? But whole foods, the less disease, um, which one of the doctor a long time ago coined the phrase, he said, bigger bowel movements, smaller hospitals. And small bowel movements, big hospitals. So people that ate whole food, plant-based, they didn't have as much disease and they didn't need as many hospitals. Uh, for every 10 grams of increased fiber over the minimum amount, minimum is 25 grams a day, there was a 10% reduction in cardiac events, which I think is huge. Usually when we think of carbs, though, the problem is 90% of our carbs are refined, which have little to no fiber, vitamins, or nutrients unless they're sprinkled on it, like those vitamin donuts were back in 1941. Um, they're high in calories and calorie density. They're white flour, white sugar, white rice, cakes, cookies, pretzels, Donuts, fries, all of those things. That is what we need to avoid. The evils of refining food eliminates water, reduces or eliminates the fiber, and reduces the nutrient content of the food. So when you're looking at carbs, when you're looking at your nutrient label, your ingredient label, the words should say whole, rolled, stone ground, or cracked, so that you know that is a whole grain product. Things that just say wheat or white or durum or semolina or bleached or unbleached or enriched um, are things to avoid. So oats. Oat groat are the whole oats. Steel cut oats, just take that and chop it a little bit. Scottish oats, just take the whole oat groat and chop it a little bit more. Oat bran separates the bran from the rest of it. Old fashioned oats, kind of steam it and 
just smash it a little bit. Um, quick oats, though, it's more processed. So you want to stay away from the more processed foods. The more processed it is, the quicker it turns to sugar in our body and the quicker it loses nutrients. And we want to keep the nutrients as much as we can. So we want more nutrition. As I said before, sugar is our primary source of fuel, especially for the brain. Our brain needs to have carbohydrates, which turn to sugar, and that's what our brain fuels on. Um, they're naturally occurring in fruits, beets, and, and corn, and other things. Our main concern is added sugars. So check the ingredient list for added sugars, and sugars go by multiple different names. Um, so just fire beware. Um, the new food label. One thing I like about the new food label, it tells us the added sugar in the food. So now we can tell if a food, um, if, if, if sugar in the food is from the fruit that's in it or if it's added. So the old way is on the left is on the left. And it just says there's 12 grams of sugar. You have no idea like what's, how much of that is, is from fruit and how much is added. Now the new one tells us that it has 10 grams of added sugar in it. So that's pretty, pretty darn high. Um, one teaspoon of sugar is four grams. What should we limit it to? Um, well, the World, the American Heart Association and the World Health Organization recommends limiting your added sugar to no more than 100 calories a day for women, which is six teaspoons or 24 grams, and no more than 150 calories a day or nine teaspoons for men. So not very much. These are just a bunch of different names for added sugars. Um, we like sugar because it does something to our brains. It highlights the same area in our brain that narcotics do. No wonder we are obsessed with soda pop. And sweet coffee. So we have our kick from our caffeine, and we also have our buzz from our sugar. This uh, salted caramel mocha frappuccino has 32 grams of added sugar or 128 calories just from the sugar. No wonder that we are increasing our waist size. So the guy eating the fast food telling the guy smoking, uh, don't you know those things are bad for you? The fast food, it's the new smoking. Artificial sweeteners, what about those? Uh, we do not recommend them. Um, so they actually encourage sugar craving and sugar dependence. So the unsweetening of the world's diet may be the key to reversing our obesity epidemic. Usually the people in cardiac rehab who are the heaviest drink the most diet pop, just saying. So what should we drink? Water. Water should be your beverage of choice or maybe some green tea. You can put some stuff in that tea. Uh, maybe some decaf coffee with some flavoring in it. There is LaCroix or some other bubbly water. They have a little bit of added flavor, but no any kind of sweetener whatsoever. I love the, to make um, iced tea out of brewed herbal teas and sparkling water, add a little bit of, um, I like cucumbers in mine as well, and lemon. That's a good combination. So let's review. So eat real plant foods as close to nature as possible. No oil, 10% of the calories from fat, 10 to 15% of calories from protein, and 75 to 80% of your calories from unprocessed carbohydrates. Keep your sodium to less than 2,300 milligrams. So how much should you eat? Eat until you're satisfied. You have this natural God-given um, desire to eat. 
If we didn't have a hunger drive, we would all starve to death. Can you imagine um, being out in the woods and you have to get up and you have to go hunting and you have to go foraging and the berries are in these prickly bushes. And if we didn't have a hunger drive, we'd just sit around like, no, I don't think so. That's too hard. It ain't going to happen. I ain't doing it. No, a hunger drive is important. We need it. But then when we are surrounded by all kinds of processed food, that is the problem. And we don't know when we're satisfied. So I highly recommend it. I don't have time to go into it, but Jeff Novick's Calorie Density Talk. He has a long presentation online for free. Look up Jeff Novick Calorie Density. Um, he will go into a funny talk about how important it is to eat foods that don't have a lot of calories naturally and to eat real foods, not food-like substances. So Jeff Novick, calorie density, highly, highly recommend. If you understand this, this principle, um, you will never have a weight problem. So let's compare. A special K protein thing, which helps you lose weight and stay on track versus the lowly hummus and carrots. So let's look at the nutrition. They have about the same calories. The hummus and carrots have less. And how much, so how much is a serving size? The chewy granola bar is only an ounce, not very big. Whereas the carrots and hummus is eight ounces, half a pound of food, less calories, half a pound of food. Um, they have hardly any fat in the hummus and carrots. It has fiber. We already talked about how important the fiber is. It has protein. It has, it has more protein in it than does the protein special K bar, which only has four grams of protein. Your hummus and carrots have 7.13 grams of protein, plus lots of naturally occurring vitamins and nutrients. Uh, traditional green bean casserole versus happy herbivore casserole. Um, look at the size. Size of the traditional three-quarter cup versus a whole cup. Look at the calories. You have less calories for more food eating this way. So you can eat more food, fill you up for less calories. So I want to do a little test with you guys. We're going to go through a couple of things and you're going to say, which one would fill you up and give you more nutrition? Um, so you can either have a little tiny mini muffin or two cups of sliced apples. They both have about 100 calories. Which one would fill you up? The apples, right? Hello, no brainer. It's more food, more vitamins. So if you eat the little mini muffin, you're like, yeah, I'm still hungry. Would you really just eat one? I'd probably eat 10, right? No, it's, it's not going to satisfy you. It might just spur your appetite on. What about three cheese peanut butter crackers, which is half of the container? This is how I gained my freshman five in college. I ate too many of these things. Um, for two cups of cantaloupe, which one would fill you up? The cantaloupe it has lots of water, nutrition, it's, and it's good for you, more vitamins. So it would fill you up, satisfy you. What about orange juice, seven ounces, or a cup and a quarter of fresh blueberries? The blueberries would fill you up. The orange juice might just increase your appetite. Now, this one's my favorite. What about seven cups of cucumbers versus three quarter cup of tortilla chips? I mean, you could down three quarter cups of tortilla chips, probably with some dip that wasn't so good either, right? Versus a whole bunch of cucumbers. I don't know anybody that will sit and like get overweight eating too many cucumbers. You'll naturally get full. You'll naturally say, oh, I'm satisfied. I had enough. Whereas the chips uh, with the salt and with the fat, you just go crazy and overeat. What about two cups of strawberries? or three eighths of a cup of ice cream, not even premium, not even the super fat stuff. One little ounce of pretzels versus two cups of baby carrots. 
So both of these have about 260 calories in each plate. Which one's going to fill you? The choice is yours. Every day, you make decisions, right? What's in the break room? What you take to lunch? Make the choice for whole foods.